Imagine this. Washington calls you the enemy of the state. The most powerful country on earth says you are a national security threat. Overnight, you're cut off from Google, from Android, from the global tech stack you depend on. For most companies, that's game over. For Huawei, it was just the beginning. Back in May 2019, the Trump administration dropped what many analysts called a regulatory nuclear bomb. Huawei lost access to Google's Android operating system, to Gmail, YouTube, Maps, Play Store, the whole package. Experts across Silicon Valley rushed to predict the company's death. They'll be gone in two years, one investor sneered. Others said, without the Google ecosystem, they're finished. But they were wrong, not just slightly wrong. They were spectacularly wrong. Instead of collapsing, Huawei launched an audacious counterattack. They built an operating system from scratch. Not a poor imitation of Android, but something different. Something designed for a new era of computing. They called it Harmony OS. Fast forward to 2025. Harmony OS is the fastest growing operating system in the world. Over 900 million devices are running on it. Smartphones, tablets, watches, TVs, even cars. Think about that. Five years ago, this system didn't even exist. Today, it's shaping the balance of global technology. Let's put this in perspective. Imagine waking up tomorrow and suddenly Gmail, YouTube, Google Maps, and the Play Store all disappear from your phone. For most people in the West, that would be a catastrophe. For nearly a billion Huawei users, that's everyday life, and they're not looking back. The numbers are staggering. In 2024, Huawei's revenue surged past $118 billion, up 22% in just one year. On the Chinese smartphone market, Huawei leapt from fourth place to second, with shipments climbing 37%. Apple, meanwhile, dropped 17% over the same period. And Harmony OS isn't just surviving. It's innovating in ways Google is now scrambling to imitate. Built-in AI agents handle tasks you'd normally juggle across multiple apps. You say, book me the trip, and the phone automatically finds the flights, reserves the hotel, and makes dinner reservations, learning your habits along the way. Dr. Chun Wei, one of the system's chief architects, explained it like this. We didn't ask how to copy Android. We asked, if we rebuilt mobile computing today, with everything we know now, what would we design? His answer was not Android. This philosophy produced the Mate 60 Pro, Huawei's flagship that shocked the world in 2023. Despite sanctions blocking access to advanced semiconductor equipment, Huawei delivered a 5G phone powered by its own Kirin 9000S processor. Sales exploded. Supplies vanished. In Chinese cities, young people started calling it the patriotic smartphone. And it didn't stop there. The Mate 70 series pushed the envelope further, blazing fast 100W charging, foldable screens with near-magical visuals, and AI assistants that made Apple's Siri feel outdated. All at prices often lower than Google Pixel or Samsung equivalents. Then came laptops. In 2025, Huawei unveiled the MateBook Fold, an 18-inch OLED screen that bends like a book, running Harmony OS with no physical keyboard required. Alongside it, the MateBook Pro, more conventional in design, but entirely powered by Huawei's in-house software. For the first time, a company was openly challenging both Windows and Mac OS head-on. App Gallery, Huawei's alternative to Google Play, now boasts 580 million monthly active users. Developers who once dismissed it as irrelevant are coming on board. Giants like Weibo and Zimalea are integrated natively. In Singapore, one developer admitted, I used to code for iOS first, Android second. Now Harmony OS is part of my initial release plan. The tools are better than expected, and the market is too big to ignore. Plus, the revenue share is more generous than Apple or Google. The transformation runs deeper in cloud and AI. Huawei's Panga 5.5 models are designed for industries like healthcare, finance, and manufacturing. Its cloud matrix architecture, 384 neural processors working together, rivals anything American hyperscalers can build. Across Asia, companies are switching to Huawei Cloud for lower prices, faster local support, and one crucial promise. Your data stays in your country. That's a message that resonates. For governments and businesses nervous about American surveillance or sudden sanctions, Huawei offers something Google can't. Independence from Washington and the integration across devices is seamless. With Harmony OS, your phone instantly becomes your laptop's touchpad. Your tablet flips into a second screen. Your watch controls your TV, 
no pairing required. One former Google executive admitted privately, we spent years convincing ourselves that walled gardens were strengths, not limits. Huawei proved in 2025 that when you build fresh, you don't need walls. Look at cars. While Tesla grabbed headlines, Huawei quietly became the brain behind China's EV revolution. Its smart solutions now power multiple automakers, from autonomous driving to infotainment. The AITO M9, co-developed with Huawei, sold 160,000 units in its first year, beating several established luxury brands. In one demo in Shenzhen, a car equipped with Huawei's system navigated 45 minutes of rush hour traffic without human input, handling aggressive drivers and jaywalking pedestrians alike. This isn't just about hardware. It's about sovereignty. Chinese analyst Li Xiaoming summed it up. The West assumed China needed Western technology to innovate. Necessity forced reinvention. Huawei didn't just replace components. It redesigned how everything works together. And that reinvention has global consequences. Investors track Huawei's rise as chip makers like TSMC and ASML, once considered irreplaceable, start to worry about losing their biggest market. Developers across Asia are shifting resources. Universities in Malaysia and Vietnam are adding Harmony OS to computer science curricula. One dean put it bluntly, teaching only iOS and Android today would be like teaching just one language in a multilingual world. Even security has flipped into an advantage. While Western officials warn about Chinese surveillance, many users now point to massive data collection by American tech giants. Huawei leans into this by offering clear privacy dashboards and granular permission controls. Users can see exactly who accessed what, when, and shut it down instantly. This ripple effect extends beyond Huawei. Xiaomi, Oppo, Vivo, all are reducing reliance on US technology, whether in operating systems, developer tools, or chips. What started as a survival strategy is turning into a sector-wide movement toward technological sovereignty. Fueling it all is an R&D engine at an unprecedented scale. Huawei spends over 23% of its revenue on research, more than $27 billion annually. That's more than some nation's military budgets. Over 114,000 people are working full-time on these projects, across labs from Shanghai to Moscow. A Stanford historian of technology put it this way. We are watching the birth of a parallel tech universe. For the first time since the golden age of the internet, a credible alternative to Silicon Valley is emerging. It's not just another ecosystem. It's another philosophy of technology, what it should do for whom and under whose control. So the central question has shifted. It's no longer, can Huawei survive without Google? The new question is, how many people will still accept being locked into one ecosystem when a multipolar alternative already exists, spanning OS, cloud, cars, and privacy? We were told Huawei was doomed. Instead, we see an ecosystem stretching from phones to laptops, from cars to the cloud. The numbers are real. The market shifts are real. And behind them lies a subversive idea. Independence is not an accessory. Independence is an architecture. And this is bigger than Huawei. Developers rewriting their launch strategies. Universities retraining the next generation. Companies choosing where their data resides. Users realizing they finally have a real alternative to Silicon Valley's walled gardens. Two visions of digital life now collide. One built on gentle captivity. The other built on sovereignty by design. This is not an accident. It's not just a reaction to sanctions. It's a fork in the road. It shows innovation can be born from constraint, dependence can be unlearned, ecosystems can be reimagined without copy-paste. It shows that a billion devices aren't just a user base, they're a moving frontier. And so the question flips once more. It's not, will Huawei survive without Google? That question has already been answered. The new question is much bigger. In this new multipolar world, who really gets to choose the future of technology, governments, platforms, or us, the users? Under US sanctions, Huawei replaced Google. And that's already a done deal. But what do you think? Would you trust your digital life to an ecosystem built outside of Silicon Valley? Or do you believe Google, Apple, and the American giants will always remain the center of gravity? Drop your thoughts in the comments, because this debate is no longer just about Huawei. It's about the kind of digital future we all want to live in.